Okay, we're to the point we can talk about our finish a little bit. I'm going to be uh, shooting this out of a Fuji Minimite 4 HVLP. And uh, this is the gravity feed gun. It's really good. Uh, I like it a lot. And it puts a really good professional finish. The first thing we'll do is start with this Enduro Sanding Sealer by General Finishes and uh, it, it's really just kind of like a varnish or something it's not really really a primer like you think of primer uh, but I'll put about two coats of that on it and sand it with 220 uh, shoot another coat and then hit it with 400 then I'll be ready to paint when I shoot this I'll be using the uh, gold tip which is uh, that's a .55 and it'll put a really good spray really good layer on it when I get to the point of painting, I'm going to use General Finishes Antique White. Again, I really, really like the General Finishes product. I'll thin it down a little bit with this uh, extender. Basically what this does is it, it uh, slows the drying time on the paint. So when you're shooting out of an HVLP, uh, it's warm air coming out anyway. It's hot outside the paint will dry really quick and you don't really want that. You want the uh, dry time to slow down because if you have any uh, orange peel or anything like that, the paint needs time to settle down and level out before it dries. So um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll, you'll see kind of how I thin that down with the extender. I'll probably four or five, I don't know, three or four coats of this and we'll be in good shape. Probably won't have to sand really in between unless we get a bug or something on it. And finally, I'll use the General Finishes Polycrylic. Let me back up. When I go to shoot the paint, I'll come to my other uh, Fuji spray gun. I keep two, one for paint, one for uh, poly and stuff like that. Uh, the paint I'll shoot with the green tip, and that's a 0.7, and it'll put a really nice coat on. So after the paint's on and dried, I'll come back with the polycrylic, and I'll come back with this gun, and the gold tip, the 0.55 tip, and I will probably just wear it out with this stuff. I'll probably put five or six coats on and uh, then we will have a factory finish on this project and we'll be ready to put it up on the wall and move on to something else. Okay, we're ready to lay the first coat of sanding sealer on. Um, what I'm going to do on this mirror, I'm going to go ahead and seal the back of it. It'll never get any paint or anything, but it'll just seal it since it's going to be in a bathroom. And we have our Fuji HVLP4. Uh, we've got it full of General Finishes Enduro Sanding Sealer. Got a fresh dip of skull and uh, a lot of sunshine. I think we're ready to go. Let's talk a little bit about uh, what we do once we get this sanding sealer put on. What I did was I shot two really heavy coats of sanding sealer. And what that will do is it'll cause the grain of the wood to raise up. And when it dries, it's going to be pretty rough. What you do is you come in with some 320 grit sandpaper and just knock that rough finish off. It'll get really smooth. and uh, you know, once it's pretty smooth and you got all the grit off of it, I went ahead and shot another two really quick coats, thin coats of sanding sealer. When that dries, it's going to be really smooth. Uh, and, and really, it's, it's pretty ready at that point. But what, what I do is I come in with some 400 grit sandpaper and just give it a real light sanding. 
I'm not really taking much of the uh, sanding sealer off. And what you end up with is a finish, really, if you just wanted a natural wood finish, I don't know if the light will show you this, but it gives a really, really nice, get the light to get on there the way we want, but a really nice finish, and it will be smooth and ready to take the paint, and uh, we're ready to move on. We're ready to paint. Time to go ahead and put some poly on our mirror parts, so let's get that done. put the mirror in um, I'm going to be using this adhesive I'm, never... so I'm just going to do like it said on the instructions and put some three inch spots the way we want it. Got nice little reveals. And I think this is going to live up to our standard of awesomeness. Well, I guess it's time to put our shelf bracket on. And the way we're going to do that, it's going to be a pretty scientific procedure. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back. And I'm going to run a screw up the bottom, actually a couple of screws, and it'll hold it in place. I think that'll do just fine. And then, once we have that and it sets up, I'm going to wait till we hang, hang the mirror on the wall, lay the shelf on. That again, that's going to be pretty scientific. I'm just going to glue it. I think it'll do just fine. This tight bond, some kind of a polyurethane glue. And I think that's going to work real good. So let's go ahead and get that done. So I'm leaving it far enough from the edges so that it hopefully won't try to squirt out on me. I ran our screw up through each end so that I could have something to anchor it to and be able to position it with. Okay, I'll get a few more screws in that. But it's looking good and 
We are almost done, sports fans. We're done. Uh, we're, we're finished with this project. We've been on it for a couple of days, and uh, I'm just really pleased with how it's turned out. Uh, the mirror, the way, you know, I know when we started, we didn't have a, a clear idea of what we were going to build. It just kind of evolved as we went through it. Uh, but how it turned out, I think it's you know going to be great once I get the rest of the wainscot put up in this bathroom with this mirror. It's going to kind of bring it all together and help me achieve the, the look that I'm not only trying to go for in this bathroom, but throughout the entire house. Uh, the finish on the mirror, I couldn't be happier with it. Um, four or five coats of paint and about ten coats of poly. Uh, this thing ought to stand up to the moisture and you know, if you get a speck of dirt or something on it, I ought to be able to wipe it off real good. So this thing ought to last for a long time. One of the coolest things that I like about it is how we, we hit the screws. If you remember, we, we bored a hole with a Forstner bit, and we had these little, these little buttons. Uh, the studs lined up perfectly. Um, I ran a two and a half inch drywall screw into the stud and uh, snug the mirror up and you know when I put this button back into place you'll never know there's a screw there. Not only that, it kind of looks like it's supposed to be there. Doesn't look like it's trying to hide something. So we have about 85 or 90 dollars in this project and I know you could buy a pretty nice mirror for 85 or 90 dollars but folks this is this isn't People's Republic stuff here. This is you know, made by your own hands and made at home. Uh, redneck engineering and redneck ingenuity, I guess. But I'm really happy with it. So thanks for watching. If you, uh, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And uh, stay tuned. I'm going to be posting more in the future. Take care.